Hello guys, how y'all doing today? Welcome to Redneck Ways, and it is model build time. Yay! It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Oh, hope everybody's doing good today. I'm tired. I just about didn't do this tonight. But I thought, well, we've done this for almost two months, maybe we on three months, so. But I can't stop now till we get her done. What's up, guys? Um, what I'm going to do today on it, we're going to uh, we're gonna paint the hall. We're going to go ahead and paint the hall white. Get that painted. Um, I still haven't glued these pieces in. So I need to take those out and put them somewhere so we don't lose them. We'll put them here. It's the back seat. It's a little kickboard. That might sit in there. Alright. Yeah, I have painted those. I have even glue. I'm going to wait till I get everything painted and then I'm going to glue everything because um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of sanding right here on the bottoms. That way they'll glue real nice. <clears throat> That's the plan on that. We'll put all the little pieces here. And I still got, I still need to make four more of these. I haven't done anything, guys, to it since last time we worked on it. Last Tuesday. Been busy doing other things. Working. Alright, guys. What it says to do now is sand the hole. So that's where we're at. We're going to sand it. So let's check off what we've already got done. Okay, the seats we got done. Check. And um, the all those are made. So check. And um, the knees. We can say we've already did it. We got four of them made. We'll check them off. And those little spacers for the feet. I've already got them cut and painted. They're just ready to put in check those off um, the foot supports they're not put in yet but they're painted they're ready to go in so check and now we're to where I just said sanding the hull right here that's where we're at so that's what we want to do and then the next step is um, the rub rails which I doubt we're going to get to that tonight because I'm going to let that white paint dry and then we'll put that on because I'm going to leave them the wooden color I'm not going to paint those but we will try to make the throw lock blocks so let's jump down there and do that first let's just go ahead and get that cut So. And then I gotta get start paint here. So it says the row lock blocks. No, do not glue the row lock block in place at this time. They will be glued after the boat is painted. So I don't know if I let's cut four one sixteenth by one eighth. So let's see what kind of wood that is. Go a little chart. One sixteenth and one eighth. So, just that. Yes, it is. That's too big. So, yeah, 116, 118. So, cut four, five eighths, 15.9 millimeter lengths of 116. So, five eighths. So that's a half. That's a three quarter. So five eighths would be right there. We're gonna get these measured. So 
I hope everybody's week's going good. Mine's been going pretty good. Um, been busy as far as down at the mill and my side jobs. Let's see here. Half, three quarters. I need that to stay. Right here, that's half, that's three quarters, but there's five eighths. Get that cut. probably going to end up having to buy that daggone drill, little drill bit because I don't I do not have anything to drill two little holes in that alright we got the 5 8 and then it says sand cut at length 5 8 sand and bevel on both ends so both ends gets beveled Measure, get another one cut. We're getting close to completing this model, and I think I'm going to take about a week break on models to start another one. But I do think I'm going to build that uh, Captain Kid next. Alright guys, there there is our row locks. They're so small. You got them beveled right there at the ends. I guess um, they go like like that. And they go on like that. So I, I probably need four of these. I must not read this. Because there's let me see how many cut four yeah cut four so we need cut uh, cut two more I, I was thinking there's for me need to be two more let's get them done so be done with them and like I said I'll probably have to go to Hobby Lobby and buy that little drill bit which kind of stinks because I don't need it for anything else just to drill a couple holes. Uh, maybe I can cut something. 
It'd be different if I was going to do the whole series on these. I think there's four of them. Yeah, there's there's four different little boats. So if I was doing all the other three, I could see getting that little drill bit. That they call it a pin um, pin vise or something, pin drill bit or something. Let's see, what did they call it? A vise and drill bits. Pin vise and drill bits. That's what they call it. <coughs> And I seen one down there and they're 15 bucks. I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these and then we'll bevel them down. where it don't have the bevel on it. So let's put this in the tray. We got these four row locks. Saying the bevel both ends to lift as shown. So let's check that off. talks about the oars. So yeah, I'm going we'll skip. I've already did the oars. Well I have got one of the oars done. Right here. Put that over here. I gotta make three more of those. But here's uh, how the row locks go on. And then there's a little bit of metal. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Oh, I got it. It came with this this metal. That's what you make the little oars, these little parts. And it's got a little. On the uh, blueprints here, there's a little pattern somewhere right here. There's a little pattern you lay your wire on, you bend it to that pattern. I mean, they gave you a lot, a lot of wire, a lot more than what I think we would need. That's that's cool, but um, it comes with a little um, towing knot. And I need to go Hobby Lobby anyway because I want to try to find like a, some rope to tie to that. Some really small rope and do some detail on this. Some after detailing. So, um, I guess uh, we'll get ready to paint it. We'll sand the hole. I'm 
trying to look over here. Okay. Um, yeah, we're getting close to the finish. Just a little bit of this and that. Um, we'll get it sanded. And like I said, this rubber, the rubber um, rail, we'll have to put it on after we get the bottom of the, the boat, the hull painted, because this is what they look like. They're just wood. They're like stained wood. And I'm going to leave them that color. And then when I put a clear coat on it, it'll make it real shiny looking. So I'll have to wait till I get that painted. But they go... I guess they go like this. But that's going to cover up my red paint. Well, not really. I think I have enough. I think I have enough red painted on there, so it'll look good. The rub goes like that. So yeah, there's enough red there. Hi, they're in the middle. Hold on. Like that. That's how the rub well goes. The rub rail. And I thought it had like a little. I don't know why I thought it had like a spacer in between. Now on here on the box here, I don't see a rub well, a rub, a rub rail on it. I don't think they put put it on the model on what they did. So I just have to see when I come get that to that point. program called um, The Six Shooter with James Stewart. I love it. I love uh, The Six Shooter. It's got some great little stories and all these uh, great little endings and you know always uh, always something to help you out. Gives you a little bit of morals to go with your life. So let's watch that. And what I'm going to be doing while we're listening to that, we're going to sand the hole, and we're going to put um, a coat of uh, white paint on. So that's what we're getting ready to do, guys. So just sit back, go grab you something to drink, some potato chips, and let's get busy. James Stewart as the six shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long legged. His skin is sun dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl, his handle unmarked. People call them both the six shooter. Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment, and the National Broadcasting Company present James Stewart as The Six Shooter, a transcribed series of dramas based on the life of Britt Thompson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. 
Now, in just a moment, immediately following this important announcement, you'll hear Act One of The Six Shooter. In a few years, our public schools will be as behind the times as the Little Red Schoolhouse. And it's estimated that by 1956, there will be some 7 million more children in elementary schools than there are now. More equipment will be needed. And above all, more elementary school teachers. To help assure your child a proper education, join and work with local groups and school boards. And for free information about how people in other communities are improving their schools, write to this address. National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 19, New York. Now, Act One of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. <laughs> It was hot that afternoon. A low, crawling kind of heat that seemed to be following us as we rode along. The sun hadn't come out in the morning, but about noon it pushed through the clouds. Boy, it was hot. By four o'clock, when it should have been cooling off, it seemed hotter than ever. We still had about 15 miles to go before we'd hit Lead Creek. That was where I figured on getting a job helping lay track on that new spur line to Salt Lake City. I met Scar on the plank and we headed down a little gully. His ears pricked up and he jerked his head. I wasn't sure whether he'd heard something or just sensed it. You know, with a horse, it's pretty hard to tell where hearing leads off and sensing begins. Yeah, what's the matter, boy? Hey. Hey. And then I heard it, too. I wheeled Scar off the trail. Went about 20 yards before I saw him. In the shade of a yellow boulder in a clump of mesquite. Young car, just lying there. He looked comfortable and relaxed like he was taking a siesta. But he couldn't have been enjoying himself too much, not with a big red stain like that across the front of his shirt. Ah. Ah. What's the trouble? Uh, I had a little accident. Yeah, yeah, it looks that way. What happened? My horse threw me a couple hours ago. I just landed on my gun. Went off. <laughs> See, you haven't got any water, have you? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh. I think that'll do. Lucky. Lucky you came by, mister. You're a stranger, ain't you? Well, I'm just passing through. Yeah, no, I'm not much of a doc. Maybe I can fix a bandage for you for the time being. No, I, I already fixed one. Give me a shirt tail. Don't seem to be yeah, doing much to it. Oh, yeah, let me see if I can tighten it. <laughs> it... Hold on now. Uh, uh, you think you can ride? I don't know. You ain't seen my pony yet. Uh, uh, you know, with a half moon on his flank? No, no, I can't say I have. Let's run off. Oh, no, just don't worry about him. My horse will get us into Lead Creek. Lead Creek? Yeah, it's close to town, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, all right, now, let me give you a hand here. <laughs> It ain't no use, miss. No, no, you gotta try. Now, just, just lean your weight on me. Uh, I'll never make it. It's okay. 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 That's there, it. There's a cabin. I'm past the mile so wet. I might be able to ride that far. Oh, that'd be better than staying here. Yeah. Now, I'm, uh, I'm gonna lift your feet up. Now, that'll hurt plenty. Once you're in the saddle, you'll be all right. Now, here we go. <laughs> There we are. I'll take it real slow. I'll walk alongside. There they are. Was it west, you said? Yeah. Last project I did. I sure do appreciate this, mister. I sure do. Uh, feel over in the saddle. I managed to keep from sliding out and we started off. About 
15 minutes later, I saw the cabin he'd been talking about. And there wasn't much more than a shack, only two, three rooms, and a couple of acres of fenced in pasture and a barn. I led Scar up to the front stoop and lifted the young fellow off. He was still unconscious, which was all the bit good, of course. I carried him up to the front door and gave it a couple of kicks. <coughs> kicked again, and he sprung open. Anybody home? You just lay there. I'll try and get some rest. I'll look around. Where? Where? He passed out again. I covered him with a blanket lying across the foot of the cot there. Well, supper was on the kitchen stove. Beef stew smelled pretty good. I opened the back door. I saw somebody cutting up a pile of kindling over near the barn. Uh, whoever it was sure knew how to handle an axe. Uh, <gasps> Where'd you come from? Now, I'm sorry if I frightened you, ma'am. I I knocked on the front door, but I guess you couldn't hear me, huh? I ain't got no hand out for a tramp. Go on, get out. Well, I, I'm not exactly a tramp, ma'am, although I'm not blaming you for thinking that. I've, I've been riding for quite a spell. Well, what do you want? I, uh, I ran across a fellow a little while ago in a gully just east of here. He's been shot up. Shot? Yeah, he said his gun went off accidental. He's hurt pretty bad, and since this place yours was the closest... Where I... is he? Oh, I took the liberty of putting him in the cart inside there, so I hope you don't mind. Oh. She didn't wait even for me to finish. She just marched past me like I wasn't even there. I watched her for a second, and then I followed her into the house. I'd never run into a woman exactly like her before. At first, I thought she was a man. You know, the pants, the checkered shirt she was wearing, the way she chopped up kindling, they fooled me. She walked like a man, too. His stiff, square shoulders. Her eyes. They, oh, they, they were a woman's eyes, all right. Kind of soft and young and frightened. Yeah. The rest of her had been... Pretty as her eyes, she'd been a real fine looking girl. Uh, take that rag off him while I fix a new bandage. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, it's a shame to tear up a fancy petticoat like that. I got no need for petticoats, mister. Can you turn him on his side? Uh, 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 it's better. Now, if I can just get the bleeding to stop. You, uh, you know him, ma'am? No. Why should I? Oh, I just thought since he was in your neighborhood. Lots well, of folks pass by here. That don't mean I know him. I don't know you neither. Oh, oh, sorry. My name's Ponsett. Rick Ponsett. Ponsett. I've heard of you somewhere, haven't I? Mm, no. No, not likely. This the first time I've been around Lead Creek here. Got a pocket knife? Uh, yeah. Thanks. I'm sure you're doing a real good job on him, you know. Your, uh, your husband off somewhere today? I'm not married. Oh, you must get kind of lonely out here all by yourself, doesn't it? I like being alone. I don't want a lot of people around me. Mm-hmm. Ah, I can't say a blame you. I, I never been much on congregating myself. I, I always sort of like to, well, you know, that bleeding's letting up a little. All right, I guess I'll be shutting off, ma'am. Uh, when I get into town, I'll send the doctor out here. No. Uh, uh, no, no, you can't. What I mean is uh, there is no doctor in Lead Creek. Oh? He moved away a couple of years ago. Well, there must be a doctor somewhere around these No. Areas. Not within 100 miles. I have to take care of him myself. Well, maybe I can find somebody to help you. You know, since I brought him in here, I, I sort of I'd feel rather like do it alone. I'll manage all right. Well, that's quite a decent of you, but I... Him being a stranger, I... All right. So long. Mr. Ponsett? Yes, ma'am? You won't tell the folks in town he's here. Hmm? Well, he's a stranger, like you said. He, he don't concern them, and... And I don't want him laughing at me. They'd say, 
Jenny Jarvis finally got herself a man. If he wasn't unconscious, you'd never manage it. So, you won't tell him, will you? Well, I, I don't suppose anybody will ask me about him. I, easy, boy. Easy, easy. What are you looking at? Oh, I was just noticing those horses over in the pasture there. Those, those both yours? Yes. Yes, they are. Why? No reason. No, I just... Pinto looks like a good animal. What do you call him? His name's Moon. Because of the marking on his flank. Looks like a half moon. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Well, I hope the patient doesn't give me too much trouble. All right. Come on. Hey, Jenny. Yeah. Come on. Uh, the sun went down, but it didn't cool off much. Maybe when the moon came out, there'd be a little breeze. I've been riding for a couple hours since I left the cabin. Still had five or six miles to go before I hit Lead Creek. We were coming through a narrow canyon when I heard a little rustling sound. First, I thought maybe it was that breeze I'd been waiting for. The next thing I knew, I was behind a rock. I wasn't quite sure how I got there. I guess my legs sort of took over without me having to tell them what to do. You ain't got a chance, Ned. We're all around you. Come out from behind those rocks and keep your hands up. Well, I'd be glad to oblige, but I I ain't Ned. Whoever he is. <laughs> Hold it a minute, Sheriff. Hmm? Oh. Well, looks like they made a little mistake, boys. Uh, you all right, mister? Uh, no serious damage, I guess. Well, sorry to bother you, but uh, what are you doing out here anyway? Well, I was heading for town. I heard there might be some work on the new railroad, so I might sign up for a spell. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess they can always use another man. My name's York. Sheriff Jim York. I'm pleased to meet you, Sheriff. I'm Britt Ponsett. Ponsett? Is that what they call six shooter? I didn't know you were in these parts. Boys, meet Britt Ponsett. Britt, this is Sam Norville, howdy. Tom Jackson, Harry Potter. Howdy, howdy, howdy. howdy. Britt's the man who brought in the Phoenix Kid. The kid had the drop on him, too, but he never got a chance to pull the trigger. At least, that's the way folks tell it. Yeah, well, between the doing and the telling, you know, there's got to be some exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm sure glad we run into you tonight. That six gun of yours may come in handy. Oh? Yeah, we're looking for Ned Landy. That's who we thought you was at first. Mm-hmm. Well, I figured something like that. Now, what's this Landy been up to? Trouble. For the last three months. Hope. Hold up a couple of shooting free. Broke into Harry's bank last night. Killed Harry's brother. I see. I've taken a party after him before, but uh, we always seem to lose him in these hills. We'll get him tonight, though. Picked up his trail this morning. Even spotted him for a minute or two on the far side of Devil's Canyon over in the trees. I got off a shot. Thought I'd hit him for sure. Well, I guess my aim was off. Anyway, he gave us a slip again. Well, what's he look like? Oh, he's young, about uh, 23, I'd say. Short, wiry, black hair, rides a pinto. Pinto, huh? Mm-hmm. You ain't seen him. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I have. Yeah? Well, where was he? I left him at a cabin about nine miles back. And, uh... Your aim was all right this morning, Sheriff. He's kind of bullet in his stomach. Of course, he said he shot himself by accident. Well, the only cabin out this way is Jenny Garber's. That's that's the woman. That's the woman who lived there. Well, well, come on, boys. Let's go. Well, ain't you coming too, Britt? Oh, no. You won't have, need any help, Sheriff. Uh, that landing's not likely to last long enough for you to get him into town, I don't think. Well, we'll get him in all right. Doc will see to that. The doc? What, but I understood sure. that any... Sam, here's the doctor. Let's <laughs> see... That's what he's been claiming for the past 20 years. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, just wait a minute, Sheriff. Just hold on. You know, I've, I've changed my mind. I, I think maybe I will ride up there with you. We'll return to James Stewart as the six shooter in a moment. First, a word from Coleman. America's leader in modern, automatic home heating equipment. You'll be glad this winter you bought a Coleman heater this fall. Yes, as you sit back in your easy chair, snug and comfortable, you'll be glad you bought a Coleman heater. You'll enjoy floor-to-ceiling warmth in those rooms you could never heat before. Get your Coleman oil or gas heater now during Coleman's big bonus sale. Here's what you get. First bonus, a new low price. Yes, now you can get a dependable Coleman automatic heater at a new low price. Second bonus, a new low operating cost. Coleman saves you up to 25% on heating bills because Coleman gives you maximum heat from your fuel. Third bonus, 
a 32-piece set of Libby's Safe Edge Glassware worth $14. It's free with your new Coleman heater. Get three big bonuses. Get your Coleman oil or gas heater now during Coleman's big bonus sale. This sale is for limited time only. So see your Coleman dealer tomorrow. You'll find his name and address in your telephone directory. The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. About an hour and a half after I met up with the sheriff, we came to a little stream trickling down the hill just off the trail. I, I'd, I'd missed it when I passed by before. I hadn't known there was any water around, and Scar hadn't smelled it either. The air being too quiet and everything. Oh, well, we pulled up and gave the horses a chance to get a drink. Well, I guess there ain't no rush. That's as bad off as you say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, something funny, sir? Well, I was just thinking about Jenny Garber. Oh? <laughs> yep, she's finally got herself a man. <laughs> He's going to be real temporary, though. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah, and if he didn't have a bullet in him, I bet he'd take off the first time he got a look at her. <laughs> <laughs> well, it take more than a bullet to keep me there. <laughs> me too, Jeff. <laughs> what is this? Something wrong with Jenny? Well, you seen her, ain't you? Yeah. yeah. Well? Well, I... I guess she's no beauty. Well, <laughs> now, that's giving her the benefit of the doubt, Father. Now, if you ask me... My horse is better looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Sheriff, now a lot of plain women seem to get along all right. It's better than some of the pretty ones, you know. Well, it ain't just that Jenny's ugly, but she's so darn awkward and big. <laughs> Why, even when she was a little girl living in town, she was always a head taller than any boy to race. And stronger, too. <laughs> well, I guess they've had enough drinks. You were. Everything was her folks are peculiar about Jenny. Wouldn't admit she was any different from the other girls. Hey, you remember how they used to dress her? <laughs> All those fancy clothes with frills and ribbons. <laughs> what made her look twice as foolish as she would have otherwise. No. <laughs> her father used to take her to parties, too, in the square dances, but uh, he was the only one who ever danced with her. No, sir. I don't think a single boy in town courted her. Not one. Uh, you're, you're forgetting Willie Franklin. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> so it's Will, Will Franklin? Yeah, yeah. He's quite a cut up. Made a bet one night with some of the fellas. He said he'd get Jenny to agree to marry him. He took her out in his wagon and proposed. Of course, she said yes. <laughs> but uh, he didn't know that Willie's friends was all hidden in the back of the wagon. <laughs> Leastwise, he didn't know it until they all busted out laughing. <laughs> it was right after that her folks died, wasn't it, Sheriff? Yeah, yeah. That's when she bought this cabin. About uh, five years ago, come to think of it. Well, Jenny can't be more than 25 or 6. Looks a whole lot older, though. Wouldn't you say so, Britt? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm not much good at judging ages, especially a woman. Well, there's her place up ahead. Lamp's still on. Must be up. Sure, she's up all right. First time she ever had a man within touching distance, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. What's mine? Yeah, better leave the horses here and go the rest of the way on foot. Oh, no. Landy's not apt to give you any trouble. Oh, you never can tell. You may be feeling better by now. Yeah, uh, but not that much. Hey, he's seen us. Didn't waste no time about it, either. He wasn't as sick as he thought, Britt. Or else he made a mighty fast recovery. We'll never hit him from down here. What do you suppose happened to Jenny? I don't know. I've forgotten about her. He's probably got her half scared to death. Well, we'll have to rush him. It ain't going to be easy, Sheriff. With this moon, he's sure to spot us. That's all we can do. Sam, you and Harry see if you can make it up to the fence over there. Right. You okay? Okay. How far twice? That'll be the signal to close in. Now, uh, hold on a minute, Chef. Just, yeah? just hold up here a minute. Now, if we go plowing up in front of that cabin, somebody's going to get hurt. Well, what's the matter, Ponset? You've been shot at before. Well, that doesn't mean exactly I like the idea. And besides, there's another way of getting in that door around back. And there are a couple of trees back there. Oh, no, you'd be watching the back door. That's no fool. I know, but it's worth a try, eh? Uh-huh. 
right? I'll go with you. No, wait a minute. No, you just let me go alone. One man ain't as apt to be seen. Now, you just keep firing. And if I ain't back in five minutes, well, we'll take him your way, huh? Five minutes. We won't wait no longer. <laughs> I hunched down low and I started circling toward the rear of the cabin. And there wasn't much cover, it just rocks and a couple of scrub pines. Anyway, nobody was shooting at me yet. So far, nobody had seen me. I came up along the side of the barn. And the back door was just, just ahead now. I still had about 20 yards to go. I ran forward and my foot caught me. Tripped over some of the kindling Jenny had stacked up there in the afternoon. I lay, I lay quiet for a minute. Just waited. Oh, it sounded to me like I'd made enough noise so they could hear it clear down the lead creek. Yeah, well, shooting wasn't in my direction, so I got up on my knees. And I raced for the cabin. I opened up the door. I kept on going. And when I got into the living room, I, I. I I saw I'd figured right. That was on the cot, just where I'd left him. Hadn't moved. It was Jenny who was doing the firing. She swung around. She pointed the revolver at me. Her eyes weren't soft, not anymore. You told him. You brought him here. I had to, Jenny. I would have taken him away as soon as he was well enough. Why couldn't you let us alone? That killed a man last night. I don't care. I don't care what he does. As long as he needs me, I'll stand by him and help him. He needed a hideout, didn't he? He must have been staying here for some time or his pony wouldn't have had enough sense to come back here with his own accord. They're going to start closing in, Jenny. You're not going to take him away from me. I won't let the... Ned likes me. He told me he likes me. And he's the first person who ever did. Give me your gun, Jenny. Even if it isn't true. Even if he didn't really mean it. He doesn't laugh at me like the others. He doesn't mind my look. But he said I'd be able to say. Even my mother said it. But I won't. Not now. Never face me with it. He'll marry me. I know he will. Johnny, listen to me. Don't you understand? I can't let you take him away. No matter what. Not even if I have to. Killing me won't help him that. It's the only way I can keep him. You gotta stop you somehow. You and the others out there. Well, there's no way you can keep him, Johnny. He's dead. What? Now turn around. Turn around, look at him. Now, I'm not trying to catch you off guard. Just turn around. He hasn't been breathing, not since I came in. Oh. He loved me. me, Sheriff. It was you. Huh? Your bullet from this afternoon. Well, I'll be done. I told you I was sure I'd hit him. Remember, Tom, I told you. Now, then how come he was able to hold us off just now? Well, he was a tough one to kill. He wouldn't give up. The strain of shooting at us must have finally finished him. Mm. Ain't that the way you figured, Britt? Mm. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Did the gunplay bother you, Jenny? <laughs>
people said if they didn't know better, they'd swear that a man had something to do with the way she changed. But, of course, they all knew better. I'd like to take a minute here to remind you about some of the great entertainment in store for you later in the week on NBC Radio. Next Friday night marks the fall return to the air of both the Bob Hope Show and the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Both these great comedy programs, formerly heard on different days, now join forces to make Friday night a top listening night on NBC Radio. The new Bob Hope Friday Night Show will feature well-known guest artists, the music of Les Brown and his band of renown, and the vocal talents of lovely Margaret Whiting. And, of course, Bob will be in there delivering his rapid-fire topical humor. You'll find that the Bob Hope Show is most enjoyable listening each Friday night on NBC Radio. And immediately following Bob Hope, listen to the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. And Alice has her brother William to keep her informed of Phil's hilarious actions. Also in the Talent Field cast, you'll hear Julius Abruzio and little Alice and Phyllis. You'll hear wonderful comedy every Friday night beginning this Friday night on NBC Radio. Yes, for the best in Friday night radio entertainment, remember to tune where you hear the familiar three chimes for the Bob Hope Show and the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Two great programs returning this Friday to NBC Radio. This is a brand new outfit. I just put it on today. Went, got my dinner. Got ketchup here. Now I got a little white paint here. Hopefully that'll come out. This stuff's pretty good and washable. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for all my subscribers. Guys, we're about done with this model. So until next Tuesday on Model Build, I'll see you then. Y'all have a great week. Bye, guys. <laughs>